Chapter 30, Don Tella, Finale. Tella loved dogs. Back on Dresda, she even gone so far as to sell a puppy once. She cleverly named him Prince Tuckleberry, the dog. But after her father found her, Tella had never seen Prince Tuckleberry again. She spent such a short time with the animal that Tella had a limited understanding of the ways dogs communicated. But clearly, Nicholas' pet was trying to tell him something. The massive black dog barked. Then he turned his gray head from toward the outside, as if he wanted the three of them to follow. Do you think he's telling us Nicholas is somehow still alive? Scarlet asked. No, Tella answered, but maybe someone else was. Like, legend. The trio stared toward the cracked barn doors and out into the late afternoon. Julian clutched Scarlet's hand as if he never planned to let her go out of sight. Tella hoped he didn't. Now that Scarlet was back, Tilla needed to go to Vanish Market and do whatever it took to purchase a secret that would show her how to destroy the fallen star before he could get his horrible hands on her sister and return her into a fate. Tella wanted to believe it wasn't even possible, but it should have been impossible that a fate was actually Scarlet's father, or that Scarlet now had the ability to see other people's feelings, not that it changed anything. Tella meant what she said, even if they didn't share a drop of blood, Scarlet would still be her sister. An early evening breeze cut through the air as Tella continued to follow Timber's lumbering steps to the back of the estate. She didn't feel the least bit rested, she felt, as worn as the slippers on her feet, but her heart kicked out extra beats as Timber led them to a cobble path so overgrown with purpling brambleberry bushes that she and Julian hadn't noticed it during their next exploration of the grounds. The dog halted and barked until the trio worked to part the prickly plants. As soon as there was enough space to run through, the animal raced ahead. The air turned acid as Tella followed, her nose wrinkled in the scent of blood and sweat and embarrassment. Suddenly, she hoped the legend wasn't on the other side. The stench wasn't nearly as foul as Nicholas' house had been, but Tella felt a sense of building horror as an aged abbey heater came into view. She saw the steps first. Their stones were almost blue in the fading light, the color of cold hands and blood veins under skin. There weren't many of them. The theater was small, the sort built of family plays or bits of light entertainment, but there was nothing entertaining about the forced masquerade taking place on the center of the stage. The people were dressed in servants' clothes and wearing horrible half masks that came in sour shades of plume, sherry, blueberry, lemon, and orange. The colors made Tella think of rotted confetti and that refused to fall as the servants moved around the stage, their arms and legs strung up with rope that turned them into human marionettes. Tella cursed. Scala gasped. Julian looked as if the food he had in the barn had risen up to scald his throat. No one appeared to be pulled the servant's strings. The cords all moved made magic, wobbling them into the stage in a forced dance, full of disturbing bells and curtsies. Tella's eyes latched on the youngest forest participant, a boy with ringlets as pretty as a doll, and a face strained with dry tears. No wonder we didn't find any servants, said Julian. How long do you think they've been like this? Scarlet asked. No one knew how to answer her. If the servants had been strung up when the count had been killed, it must have been at least a full day. Most of them didn't even appear to be conscious. They had to stay bowed as their bodies were jerked about the stage. Tella raced toward it, hoping it wasn't too late to save them. This looked like Jester Mad. He was ability to inanimate objects. He must have tied them all up and then used his magic on the ropes to keep them moving. How do we undo it? Scarlet asked. When the prisoner petrified that family, he left a note. But no one found a note on the stage. I think we just need to cut the cords around to have him, said Julian, which proved easier said than done. The poor servant's arms and limbs moved faster with each attempt to set them free. Julian was the only one with a blade. He gave it to Scarlet, but none of them had an easy time of things. They all had to jump back more than once to avoid being kicked in the stomach or punch in the face, as they worked to undo the servant's bonds. Thankfully, Nicholas didn't employ too large of a staff. There was only half a dozen of them. Their hearts were still beating, but barely. None of them could stand on their own legs very long once they were freed. The master has infection remedies for the wounds in his greenhouse, muttered an older man as he ripped the rotted blueberry mask from his face, till I imagined he was a butler. His eyes were the saddest of the lot as he looked over his fellow servants all slumped across the stage. Julian found the remedies while Tella fetched water and Scarlet procured bandages from a small closet 
with the swimmer's raw wrists and ankles. The entire ordeal was terribly sober. Neither Scarlett, Julia, nor Tella told any of the swimmers what had happened to Nicholas, and none of them asked. We can tell us suspect that they must have already known, or they have experienced enough terror and they didn't want to know. There were lots of murmured things, but no one met her eyes, as if they were ashamed of what had been done to them. Only the boy with the ring lens looked at Tella directly. He even managed a crooked smile as if she was some sort of a hero, but she wasn't, not at all. She was part of the reason all of this had happened, but in that moment she vowed that she would make up for the part she played in freeing the fates. I'll find who did this to you and make sure he never hurts anyone again. He wore a mask, offered the boy, but it wasn't like this. The child kicked out the scrappy of cherry flap that had been tied to his face. He was shiny like proclaim, and on one side was bearing teeth, while the other side winked and struck out half a tongue. Jester mad, said Tella, he's a fate. Several of the adults suddenly looked her way as she spoke. At least one appeared to think she shouldn't be saying any of this to the little boy, but after what they just experienced, none of them contradicted her. Tella didn't go into the history of fates or how they'd been freed from the deck of destiny, but she said enough so that, once the servants and the boy recovered, they were warned others about the danger Valenda was in now. It felt like an insignificant effort, but hopefully it would save a few other people from being turned into human toys or from being murdered, like her mother in legend. Tell's eyes scanned the dusk of her eyes and as if a legend finally might appear on it, shimmering brighter than the stars that were beginning to sneak out. She kept searching for signs of his return after all the servants were fed and bandaged and helped back to their quarters in the rear of the estate, which didn't possess any of the rot that had clung to the Count's li library. Tella was ready to follow the servants inside and wash up, but Scarlet lingered outside the door and an overground path covered in peculiar phases. Do you want to come inside with me to wash up? Tella asked. The air was still, but Scarlet's skirts rustled around her ankles. Tell had a notice when the gown had shifted color. Earlier had been a brilliant ball gown red. Now it was a morning black. I'm sorry about Nicholas, Tell said. He didn't deserve to die like that. No, he didn't. I should never have tried to find him. Then he'd still be alive. Scarlet's eyes glistened with tears as she looked up at Tella. We can't let the fallen star do this to anyone else. We won't. Tella reached out to take her sister's hand. But Scarlet stepped back, a worry line between her brows. I'm sorry, Tella. I thought I could stay here with you and Julian, but I need to return to the Fallen Star. What? No! Tella's voice was joined by Julian as he emerged from the servants' quarters. You can't! Julian must have just cleaned up. His dark hair dripped water all over the overground path as Scarlet stepped closer to the estate and away from the servants' open windows. I'm sorry, Scarlet said, but I have to do this. I think it might be the key to defeating the fates. Absolutely not. Julian bowed while Tella yelled. Have you lost your mind? He killed her mother and threatened to turn you into a fate. You can't go back to him. I don't want to go back, Scarlet said. But I knew I had to as soon as I saw the servants. If they have left much longer, they wouldn't be have survived. But how will your going back do anything to help other people like them? Tell argued. She wanted the same thing as her sister. She wanted to find a way to kill the fallen star and protect everyone from the terror of him and his fates. But this was not the way to do it. The vanished market is one of the faded places, she said. There are sisters there who sell secrets, and I think that they might have one that will tell us how to kill the fallen star. And what if they don't? Scarlet argued. Then we'll find another way, Julian cut in. I think this is the other way, Scarlet said. The fallen star wants me to master my powers, and I think that might be the key to stopping him. There was another fate there, the lady prisoner. She told me that to defeat the fallen star, I needed to become what, I, what he wanted. Of course she say that. Till it's back, the lady prisoner is a fate. He has her locked in a cage. She can't go out unless he dies, and even if she is trying to manipulate me, it doesn't mean she's wrong. What she told me makes sense, Tella. You said that if an immortal loves, they become human. If I conquer my powers, I can make him love. I could turn him into human and then we could defeat him. Or you could conquer your powers and turn into a fate, Tella said. And love doesn't work that way, Julian added. Magic can do a lot of things, but I don't think you can make someone love. 
with it. This is too dangerous. I'm not asking either of you to let me do it. It's my choice, not yours. So I'm the only asking you not to stop me unless we find another way to destroy him. I'm the only one who can do this and I want to do this. Tell it you once told me that there's more to life than staying safe. I was talking about having fun, not moving in with murderers. Well, I don't think any one of us will be having fun if the fallen star takes over the empire. And we both know you do the same thing. Scarlet and closed her sister in another hug. She gave incredible hugs. She knew exactly how tight to hold, when to stay silent and when to let go. But no matter when she let go of this hug, it would be too soon. Tella held on tighter. She wanted to keep arguing. And she kept fighting, as she told Scarlet how terrified she was. As she went into details about Nicholas' gruesome death and reminded her of the way the fallen star had killed her mother, Tella knew she would convince her to stay. Tella wanted to do that so much, but she just vowed to do whatever it took to defeat the fallen star, and she meant it. She just hadn't thought it would take her sister. She sagged against Scarlet as the sky finished darkening into a rippling black night. Are you sure you don't want to be selfish right now and just think about saving yourself? Of course I want to do that, but I need to do this for me, for you, for Julian, and for all the servants we just helped. We don't have a chance of doing what I can. I can't do nothing when I have the ability to do something. And I have the rubber key. If it gets too dangerous, I'll escape. Keys can be stolen, Tella murmured. I'll be cautious. Scala hugged her sister tighter until Tella finally pulled away. She hadn't wanted to, but if Scarlet was going to go back to the Fallen Star, she needed to do it soon, before anyone noticed her absence. Scarlet probably wanted a proper goodbye with Julian as well. And by proper, Tell imagined it would be the sort of goodbye that the praying eyes of a sister weren't meant to witness. Chapter 33, Scarlet, Finale As Tella went into the guest quarters and tried to wash off all the dirt and sorrow and lingering traces of guilt from her person, Scarlet stood under the wedge of moonlight, preparing for another goodbye, and she didn't want to have. Julian appeared to feel the same way. His brows furrowed, his lips were pressed tightly together, and when he wrapped his arms around Scarlet, there was nothing soft or tender of his touch. I know you said this isn't my choice, but you can tell me that you've chosen me, and then give me absolutely no say in your life. Is this your way of asking me again not to go? No. He held her closer, tucking her head to his chest. In the future, because there will be a future for us. I just hope you can talk to me about things like this rather than telling me you've already made up your mind. All right, Scarlet conceded, but I hope you do the same. I wouldn't ask it of you if I wasn't planning on do that, doing that. Julian fingers clutched her waist as if he could still find a way that didn't involve letting her go. Scarlet wished she could. She really didn't want to go back to the Fallen Star, but in that moment, she was more worried about Julian. Like Tella, he was impulsive and ruled by his emotions, which Scarlet could see was graying as storms and full of worry. What if I try to slip through letters every few weeks? I don't think it will be safe to visit again. And she didn't think it would be safe to send him messages either, but she worried that if she couldn't find a way to assure him she was alright, it would come after her eventually and put himself in danger. I can open a door with a rubber key and send you notes to let you know I'm alright. I still don't like it, Julian said. If you did, my feelings would be probably injured. He pressed a kiss to his forehead and for a moment his lips stayed there. Be careful, Crimson. I'm always careful. I don't know. He pulled away just enough for her to see his mouth twitch at the corner. A careful girl wouldn't say she loved me. You're wrong. I don't think my heart would be safer than in your hands. But even as she said it, her heart fell heavy. Jonah's mouth was still forming half a smile, but his eyes were expressing something else. Scarlet always loved his eyes. They were brown and warm and full of all the emotions he drove him. Julian wasn't always honest, but his eyes were, and right then, he was looking at her as if he was afraid the next thing he saw her, she wouldn't be the same. I'm going to come back to you, she promised. That's not the only thing I'm worried about. His voice was hoarse. I spent most of my life around magic. My brother's magic has brought me back to life more times than I can count. 
I've tried to walk away, but magic like that is difficult to leave. I know right now you think that if you can conquer your powers, you can control the fallen star. But your magic might end up controlling you instead. His eyes left hers to glance over his enchanted dress before landing on the faded key in her hand. It shimmered silver bright in the dusky light. She hadn't even realized she'd already taken it from her pocket, but lying on the key was becoming a habit, just like wearing her enchanted dress. But she didn't want to depend on it, the only wanted to master it enough so that she could make the fallen star love her and turn him into a mortal. Then she'd be content to never use it again. You don't have to worry about me. Scarlet left her head and quickly gave Julian another kiss, wishing she could say more, but knowing it was past the time to return. When she first used the key, she hadn't planned on going back. Should she not thought about how much time was passing, she hoped the fallen star wouldn't pay attention to the visit as soon. She also worried about the little prisoner waking up. After turning the rubbery key, Scarlet kept her steps light. But when she entered her room in the Marjorie, she knew things were not as she left them. The little prisoner was awake, swinging silently on the perch on the lavender skirts, pressed the polished floor on her get a cage. If you're going to sneak out, you shouldn't leave for so long, and don't look so surprised Did you really think I didn't know. She affected a soft snore. Why pretend? Scarlet asked. Because I knew you wouldn't leave if you thought I was awake. But you need to be wiser. Her voice turned whisper soft, and her inhuman eyes shifted from purple to white, as they had earlier that night. Leaving here for hours at a time will get you caught with that key far sooner than you're supposed to be.